All right, gentlemen and ladies. There's a, I'm gonna attempt to give you just a short video on what actually I did to make this panel. Basically how I upholstered the back end. Because a couple problems I had and a couple ideas I had that may give other people's ideas, blah, 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 blah. So here's how I did it. Somebody asked me for measurements. Uh, I would be careful with the measurements, but maybe it's a place to start. The height of this panel is 23 inches. That should be consistent uh, for any build. However, the width, so from that corner to this corner, may vary slightly, and how you put together your B pillars uh, will definitely change it. And I'll show you what I'm talking about in a minute. So the main panel, so let me back up a little bit. With the kit, you get a roll of outdoor carpet, which uh, it's, it's pretty good carpet. Uh, and you can just glue that on the aluminum and on the fiberglass surround. Um, but I wanted to do something a little nicer. And as you probably saw, if you watched my uh, putting the interior together video, I did some pretty significant soundproofing in between here. I did that in my Jetta kit and it was nice. The, the car was just really nice and quiet and it makes it sound tighter and you have less rattles and stereo sounds better, the AC works better, et cetera, et cetera. So I put a layer of, um, I think it was called Boom Mat or Rattle Trap. It was Rattle Trap. It's a knockoff of a big name brand, but it's the um, aluminum skinned uh, rubber. So I put a coat, uh, a full sheet or full coverage on this panel and on the aluminum panel. And the key to that stuff is roll it out real good. You can read about applying that. Uh, if you apply it well, it puts up with the heat and it doesn't come off. If you go skimpy, it'll peel off and whatever you have glued to it will come off too. And that's a bummer, uh, but too much talking about that. So then this is just headliner material, quarter inch foam backed uh, black, the same that I redid my headliner in. And I glued that right onto the boom mat or man, it's driving me nuts. I can't think of the name. I'll put it, I'll put it in the remarks later. I'll think of it. Um, I left the boom mat only comes to this edge. I put the the window seal, I just stuck the window seal in so I could get a good measurement. So it comes to here, but this foam is tucked under that seal, comes all the way to the edge of the fiberglass to give us a clean, clean look. Um, it came out pretty good. I'm trying to get some light in here and it's not the greatest, but anyway. So that's what I did with the upper half. I brought that fabric comes down to the little shelf here and then comes out forward and I cut it even with the edge of that fiberglass so that then I could put this angle iron on here. I'm sorry, it's really angle aluminum. Uh, aluminum angle, I'm not sure what the correct term is. Um, there you, I'm showing you all my little wrinkles there, but um, the aluminum angle then to cover that edge. I really wanted to do some wood paneling. The car was telling me I need wood paneling. So I'm really excited the way this panel came out. So I cut the panel um, 54 inches, but it gets a little bit narrower down here at the bottom. Um, you can't see it because it's tucked up behind and that's the way it should be. Um, so this is 23 by 54 on the wood panel. Um, the aluminum is 54 across. Um, you have to flex the wood to get it in. Uh, the, the aluminum angle, you can go crossways and, and work it in but that will determine your length. Start a little bit long and work your way down, obviously, because if you cut it too short. Um, but where I really ran into the problem is here on the B-pillar covers. Let me see if I can get some light and angle here. So ideally, you would cut your, your side panels that come in the car stock. Um, you would cut them whatever your distance is here. Um, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, that on top of the boom mat, I put, um, now I'm, I'm getting a complete blank now, but I put some sound absorbing foam on top of that. So there's actually an inch of space and you can't really tell, but you can flex that in a little bit. There's an inch of foam behind that for more sound absorption and insulation. Uh, it works out great. It came with uh, an aluminum face on it that goes in into the car and then the backside is adhesive, uh, PSA, pressure sensitive adhesive. Um, worked pretty well. And 
and it, it, it sounds great driving the car around. It's nice and nice and quiet. Uh, so back to the B pillar. That foam being that thick drove this length of where you want to cut your B, uh, your your side panels, which includes this lower B pillar cover. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not getting a good angle here. Let me see if I can kind of crawl in here. And... Okay, there, there you can see it a little better. So the lower B pillar cover. So ideally, I would have cut that panel basically an inch and a half longer to fill this gap. <clears throat> but they were cracked, as these VW plastics are horrible. They get brittle and they crack. So I took it right at this seam, and actually right there you can see just a little bit of the rest of where that panel was. Uh, but that's the attachment point for a, um, a little plastic clipper deal in here. So I needed to leave that. So I ended up being an inch and a half short. I just took some foam, wrapped it with the headliner material, and made myself a little spacer for each side here. Uh, it's not perfect, it works. It's so dark back here that you really don't see it. Uh, and this is a daily, not a show car, so. Um, it's cool. I'm down with it. But that left me with an unsightly, as they say, um, corner here where I had this. So to make up for not being able to get a piece of angle into place that actually went all the way to the sidewall, I took a, this is another piece of aluminum angle, uh, cut it to the length from the back wall to the edge of my B pillar cover here and then cut out, notched it here, and then screwed it into this. So this angle actually only comes just past this screw. So that gave me a little more flex to cover a little more and make it look a little nicer. So that's kind of non-standard. You can do better, uh, especially if your panels aren't cracked and you can just cut them an inch and a half longer. Basically, there's a, a speaker just past this point, the way that uh, panel comes. And you'll be cutting pretty close to that speaker hole. Um, but again, work it out first, what you're gonna do for insulation and all that, because that will drive where your cut goes. Um, so that's why I'm hesitant to give anyone dimensions. Okay, and then for mounting, um, obviously the B-pillar cover uh, goes in the factory way with the plastic clips in the back and it clips into your door seal here uh, and then there's one clip somewhere down there in the bottom um, so that's all that's all standard my little cheapo fix here this is just tucked in here I could have put a little adhesive in there but it really didn't need to it stays in place I made it just a hair big so it has a little compression on it to stay I made it a little bit long so it comes up behind here a little bit um, and I had to cut it a little bit thinner at the bottom um, to fit in there uh, cardboard templates is a good way to go trying to make this stuff up um, then for mounting so I had to put this in actually if you really count it it's four pieces so there's the wood piece the angle iron or the aluminum angle and then the, the two side panels and I did these little side brackets the same way on each one had them drilled and screwed it together before I put it in the car tested it yep okay it's good Assembled it in the car putting those screws in. Yep. That's gonna work took it all apart took it back out painted it um, And then put it back in the car put the angle iron in Put my panel in marked I had drilled the holes here Marked it out so that these holes line up outside of the aluminum bed wall but inside the fiberglass quarter panel so from the outside where those are is they're they're in 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 this cavity here so they aren't exposed to the elements you don't see them uh no big deal but it came out pretty clean that way okay sorry i'm being so verbose but i'm trying to cover everything so these actually go into um rib nuts uh these are just quarter 20 rib nuts in there so i did three down each side put it in and found that I had a little bit of pucker in the middle. Um, probably not getting it out of the video and I apologize for shaking the camera so much. There's, there's still a little bit of pucker, but I added two screws that go into the bed there below the bed floor 
but above the fuel tank. Remember the, the seat pan from the back seats of the original car, which is basically, this is the edge of that original seat pan. There's a fuel tank under there. So you gotta be careful putting long screws into there. Uh, but this is a two inch stainless screw. And then I like these little, um, I don't remember what you call these washers that you use a, a countersink screw on and they look they look kind of dressy. It's kind of old boat, kind of 50 style. Anyway, um, so I added those two screws there just to help me with that pucker. Um, again, I had to arch that. This is quarter inch thick. This is actually Luan. Uh, it's not expensive paneling. Um, I stained it, uh, played with a couple different stains to get my color right. And then this is spar varnish on, on top, which is popular for boat stuff, uh, truck beds. Um, a little bit expensive, but it makes a nice, durable, high gloss coat that protects it from, it has UV inhibitors and of course uh, protects it from water. Um, so I bent, uh, bent the wood just a little bit to fit it in. I think you can see that in the video. Got that on, bolted it down uh, the, the six bolts, three down either side, and then screwed in the, these are just little half inch stainless screws that only go through the aluminum angle and this panel. So really the panel is bolted in and the angle is, is screwed to the panel. It's really not fastened to anything anywhere. But with those little extension brackets in the edge, in the corners, it's not going to go anywhere. Um, so that's how I did it. Um, it was more challenging than the Jetta. The Jetta kit, or any of the kits that have the sliding window, there's a lip, there's an aluminum bracket that leaves you a little lip here. So you can make a panel that slides up under that lip and it holds it and you really only got to put a couple of screws somewhere. You can put them down along the bottom behind the seat like these or something like that. Uh, and you can cover it with vinyl, you can cover it with leather, you can cover it with whatever you want. Um, I would do kind of the same thing if I was going to do a different style instead of the stain. I'd probably just use the same Luan because it's fairly inexpensive. Um, glue some quarter inch foam and then glue, you know, vinyl or uh, whatever your material of choice is. You could use this same headliner material. Um, it looks pretty good and it's pretty durable, vacuums out well, um, whatever color you want to do, etc. Uh, but in this car, um, you kind of got to do this in two piece. So the top is all glued on all around the window. I did it before I put the headliner in so I could glue it. Uh, you can see the headliner comes down almost even with the window here. Um, so you got to do it. It's easier to do it before you put the headliner in. You kind of push that up. I don't know if you could see. Yeah, I don't want to push too hard here, but um, so it's glued on all the way to the top. Um, maybe you can tell in the interior video. It's tucked under that window seal, so that'll hold it. I used uh, contact cement to uh, put it on, put three coats on, let it tack up in between coats, and then let it tack up before you start putting the fabric on. I would use the same technique if I was going to cover this with fabric. Uh, so that was my technique and, and how I did it for this car. Uh, I'm pretty happy the way it came out. I think it looks pretty good. And just remember while you're doing the panel, um, I was futzing and, and beating myself up about uh, how many blemishes I got in the stain and I actually used an old piece of Luan that had was sitting outside on the side of the shop and I was like oh I should have just gone and bought a new one for 15 bucks or whatever it is but this is all covered by the seats so you really don't see much you know this center piece here behind the center console if I get my angle right you know there's the center console so that that bit is a little bit critical because you see that when you look in the car um, but not much else so there's my long tirade of of how I made this. I hope it gives you an idea that that helps uh, helps everybody else. Um, I seriously considered using some aluminum diamond plate because I'm a geek and I'm kind of a diamond plate fan. Um, but the car told me we're doing wood. Uh, on If you ever saw any of my Jetta videos, I had a lot of diamond plate on, on that, and including that whack paint job I did. Uh, but tons of, tons of ways you can go. You can use the same plan and do a million different things. Make it yours, make it your cars. Listen to your car, see what she tells you you want. Do it what, what you like. Um, good luck to y'all. If you have more questions, by all means, uh, post them 
in the comments here. Um, and all this material I got at a big box store, Home Depot or Lowe's, uh, it's nothing rare or hard to find. Uh, there are places you can get it for cheaper than getting it at Lowe's or Home Depot, but um, it is available there. While I'm here, I'll just show you. Um, for, for speakers, obviously you lose your spot for speakers. Now you could cut a cavity here that, go, that extends into this cavity like we talked about uh, for where my, uh, t not T-nuts, but the uh, rib nuts are. There are a hundred different designs of speaker boxes and they range in price from 25 bucks to, I don't know, probably a hundred bucks. But the, the, basically the design is that you can mount them, whatever your preferred angle is, you know, you can mount them there and then your speaker doesn't extend into your panel so you have room for the speaker uh, I may do that on the next build um, I kind of got in a hurry and I didn't want to figure out where they needed to go um, I like this idea uh, I've done this in other vehicles but for this one I just got cheap $25 excuse me $25 six and a half inch speaker boxes pulled the speaker harness punched a little hole in the carpet speaker wire comes out and threw the speaker in there and that fits down underneath the seat just fine when the seat reclines. Um, Cause I'm, again, I'm a little bit of a geek and I gotta, gotta have my stereo stuff. If you look, close your eyes for a sec while I swing the camera around. If you look on this side, when I had the bed all open, I pulled, so this is the corner uh, behind here. This is where that huge wire bundle comes through and goes to the rear of the car and goes into the bed. Uh, by the way, I pulled about six extra wires through and just I have some extra dead wires laying in the bed and under the carpet in case later on I think of something that I wanna do with it. Why you have that bed open, uh, it's an easy time to pull the wires, so highly recommended. While I had that harness open, I unwove that harness and pulled the um, the monsoon amp for those of you that have a monsoon amp I pulled those leads out uh, horrible video in here so I pulled that harness out brought it forward under the carpet punched a hole up under the seat brought those wires through and I'm just gonna probably put some velcro on it leave it up under the seat here so there's my there's my amp in my speaker box and that's how I did the stereo it's not really a high-speed route but while we're here and talking about this stuff uh, give you some ideas I didn't want to mount the amp under the bed for moisture issues I like having it in the cabin of the car just to keep it from getting moist and wearing out so good luck in your build uh, I hope you all have fun with it Half of the fun to me is figuring it out, and then the second half of the fun is driving around your creation and the whole built not bought uh, piece. I, that's that's my jam. All right, guys, have a good one. Thanks for watching.